my thing is because there's so much stuff going on with the, you know, with plugins and fractals and, and, you know, that kind of thing that so many people don't even want to use ca- lug around heads anymore, cabinets, you know what I mean? So, you know, business wise, me sinking all this money into rotary phones. I mean, I still love them. What's shaking, everybody? Zach Wild here, I'm hanging out with Father Justin on ultimategutar.com. Wanted to check in with you. Looks like you got a busy year. Got some tour schedule. Uh, you got a festival this uh, this fall. So what do you got going on in uh, 2024? Well, I just made my bed. I just did the dishes. So uh, life is good, man. I'm having coffee and I'm talking with you, buddy. So uh, no, just lots going on, man. Uh, you know, I guess we've been, I mean, the, the Pantera celebration, I mean, that's over a year now. I remember when we, you know, left for New Orleans for rehearsals. I mean, I can't believe that's already over a year. So, I mean, obviously, we've got the Berserkers coming up, setting that whole thing up. And then uh, writing for the next Black Label album, doing everything like that. There's just always something going on. So, I mean, which is awesome. I mean, it's just, it's kind of funny because during the, you know, the COVID lockdown, you know, that was two years of nothing going on. And... Probably since I joined, started rolling with the boss with Ozzy back in 87. And, and like, even before that, I mean, you know, between the band I was in, Zyrus, and I mean, you know, since there's always something going on. But I mean, that two year period, I remember everybody was like, man, you must miss the road or you must miss doing gigs or whatever. And I was like, no, I'm actually kind of digging this. I get to walk the dogs every day and just. There's no deadlines, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I wouldn't change any. I mean, I'm blessed that I get to do what I do, and I get, you know, that's the reason why you have posters of Jimmy Page and Randy Rhodes and Ozzy and all my guys up on the wall. When you're a kid, it's just because that's what you want to do with your life. And I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing you a couple times paying tribute to Dime uh, with the guys in Pantera. Is that something that's going to keep rolling on? Uh, there was talk of possibly some new music with you guys, maybe not under the Pantera band. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think, you know, I mean, obviously it's always up to Phil and Rex. I mean, we're allied forces over here. So it's just, uh, whatever the fellas want to do, you know, if they're just like, you know, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. Cause I mean, it's just, you're, we're paying tribute to Dime and Vinny and, you know, to, to Phil and Rex with a, this living, breathing cultural thing that they created, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, it just brings so many people together and, you know, for all the, you know, for all the, the Pantera faithful, it's, it's a chance for them to take a trip down memory lane, which is, you know, when remembering when the first time they saw, saw the fellas. And then, you know, for all Phil asks every night, how many people is the first time ever seeing Pantera? And it's just, it really, it's a beautiful thing that so many new kids are, that that's just a testament to the awesome music that the fellas created. So, you know, I say it every night, like, you know, when we were at, at the garden, Diamond Vinny were on the side of the stage. It's just like, fellas, look at what you created. So I know when I got to see Pantera, I had never seen him with, with Diamond Vinny, and it was so cool getting to hear that music live for the first time. Are there some songs that when you're up there playing, they hit you a little bit harder? knowing that uh, you're paying tribute to Diamond Vinny? Well, obviously, you know, since we added floods and everything like that, you know, just the tribute piece, especially at the end of the song. Yeah, I, I, you know, I got to stay focused on that one from breaking down, you know, just getting too emotional, whatever. But, uh, you know, I feel them all the time. You know what I mean? So, and then, like, even when we were getting ready to do the thing, uh, the rehearsals, and, and they were just figuring out how we were going to do this, It'd be, there'd be signs all over the place, you know, whether on a license plate that would be like 333, or I'd run into like a dime bag license plate in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? It was just like him just pushing this thing along, willing it to happen. Yeah, so he, he's just always around. You know, I think uh, when we were in New York, you know, just like signs, that, like when we just did the garden, it was like my white Barbara Ann was like, check this out. And it was just like, something came up and it just reminded us of a dime. And I was like, wow, that, that's crazy. 
And it was just, you know, or, or you would look on our phone and it'd be three, 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 you know, just like, wow. It's just like, it's just these signs everywhere. <laughs> I could see time just doing it going. I hope these idiots realize it's me sending these signs. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the one to do it too. Uh, so you got uh, Berserkus Fest. It's a smooshing of Berserker and a Circus maybe. What a cool lineup. Like I've heard some people like, why is Cody Jenks co-headlining this thing? Which is like a mostly metal rock. Why not? He kicks ass. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we just said. I, you know, aside of, you know, Father Cody, it's just, I mean, pretty much everybody that's on the bill, I've known everyone for years. So, and they all kick ass. And it's just, uh, it's just a great excuse to get together and put a party together and have, have, have your friends come down to it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the reason why we put it together. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of shenanigans going on as well. So, I mean, uh, you know, aside of the bands playing and, you know, all my buddies just throwing down, it's just like all the, the, the comedic, you know, the, the festivus, Betty Crocker, taste devastation, demolition fest events that are going to be going on. You know, so it's just going to be just an all-around good time. Yeah, I saw there's a strongman competition. I'm not joining. Are you going to be in the strongman competition? Well, you got the strongman comment. Well, I don't want to pull a fallopian tube or, you know, strain my labia before we have to do the show. So I might might have to sit the first one out and then see how it pans out for the, for the next time we do it. But uh, we, we got like the slap fighting competitions. We're going to have thumb wrestling, arm wrestling. I mean, uh, trying to get synchronized swimming going on in there as well. So, I mean, you know, swap meet, food trucks. Coffee, beer tasting, you know, everything like that. So it's just going to be, yeah, there's going to be a lot of shenanigans going on. But on a serious note, like, I, I know you've, uh, you work out when you're on the road quite a bit. You're looking great, by the way. Uh, you know, my, my wife, you know, she runs a hard bargain over here. I'm one of her, one of her escort boys. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm known right now as Wednesday. So, uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm moving up the ladder. So I'm trying to get that weekend slot. But, uh, but you know, she, she runs, she runs a tight ship around here and, uh, you know, I got to stay on my toes, but, um, no, I mean, I've always worked out and everything like that ever since I was a kid. I mean, obviously before the Aussie gig and everything like that, but, uh, but you know, back in the day I'd be going into the, I'd go to a gym with a 12 pack with me, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, cause I'd have to carve up before we got in there, but, uh, so now it's just, you know, more of the old force and Valhalla Java. But, uh, yeah, a lot of steak and a lot of eggs and stuff like that, bro. So for us guitar players that do like to work out and lift, are there is there kind of a trade-off between finger dexterity and, uh, and working out a lot? You know, you're kind of putting your hands at risk sometimes when you're working out. I mean, when you're putting your hands at risk is when you're punching walls and being <laughs> doing dopey stuff like that. But, uh no, I've never had any problem. I mean, for me, a lot of it's mental too. I think for a lot of people, you know, cause I, I just love lifting by myself. I don't love, I don't need anybody yelling at me or anything like that, you know, to get to squeeze out another rep or two. I mean, I, I, I can do that on my own, but no, I, for me, it's just, it's more of a mental thing. You know what I mean? It's just, it's really therapeutic. You know, I think for, for most people, I think if you ask them with them, when they lift, it's just, it's one of the best, you know, you go into a gym for, an hour it's just a it's an hour of therapy man you know for me anyways because it's just you and the iron and you could just get away from everything you know so it's great so you mentioned you're writing some new uh black label stuff uh where are you at with that do you have a release date in mind you're trying to meet or uh no, no, no. I, I mean it's it's crazy i mean it's just uh i mean the way i approach pretty much every record or even even down with oz you know like when, whether it was no rest for the wicked and then we're doing now we're doing no more tears we're going to do net to me i always looked at it like kind of like with sports i mean it, it's whether we just won the super bowl we won the world series or we got you know we, got, we lost in the playoffs or in the championship round or you know we we didn't make the playoffs we were that close or or whether you had a 500 season or it was a terrible season i mean it's just uh the next season you go in 
with the expect, you know, it's, it's exciting because you're just going in with, and it's, it's brand new and everything's fresh, you know, whether we won a championship or we had the worst season we ever had. So, uh, it's just always exciting. I always look at it when you're making records, it's the same kind of thing, you know, cause you don't know what you're going to get, you know, so, or what you might write tomorrow or, you know, today or whatever, you know, so it's just like, that's the excitement. I think for every musician, it's just, uh, you said, you know, you might just start jamming on something. I'm like, oh, wow, what's what's that? And you're like, oh, I just started noodling on it this morning. You know, let's say if it was into the void or something, you know, like if you were writing something like that, I'd just be like, wow, what, what, what's that? Got to put that on the record. You know, like, yeah, I was just jamming on it this morning. I was thinking, I'm working that out. I was like, you should record that one. You know what I mean? So that's the beauty of writing. So, you no, know, like every day I just go in, I have my little lamp set up in, out in the uh, Doom Crew Inc. Iron Den out there. So, I just sit down with a cup of old and force and I just start jamming riffs. You know what I mean? Whether you get inspired, you could be listening to Sabbath or hear a Zeppelin riff or something and just, you know, sit down and start writing. And next thing you know, you got a whole nother new song. You know what I mean? So, uh, I just, we got a whole bunch. It's always crazy because we end up writing when we're, when we're in the Vatican, it just like, we'll track you know, so many songs, obviously you want to get down to the, the nitty gritty of at least 10 that you solid ones that you want to put on there and then take it from there, you know, and then usually it's always the music is first. And then I'll usually either sit in the truck and I'll just listen, you know, crank it and listen to it and figure, sing a melody on it. And then lyrics are always last, you know? So, you know, once I get something I want to sing about then then I'll, then I'll start putting it together so you mentioned zeppelin and sabbath is it still that old stuff that you grew up loving that inspires you today or are there some younger artists or newer bands that, that you think you can... no, I, I think i think if you ask everybody i think you know whether like with my father you know he loves sinatra and everything like that so i think you never i don't think you really ever outgrow all the stuff you loved as a teenager and the music that moved you you know, like when I hear Diary of a Madman, it just brings me back to such a magical time in my life when, you know, when I first started uh, getting serious about guitar and music and then hearing Over the Mountain and, you know, you Can't Kill Rock and Roll and everything on that album. It's just, uh, th that's the power and the beauty of music. So, and all my Sabbath records, that's the same thing for example, and everything like that. When I hear Robin Trower, Frank Marino, you know, the live album and everything. It's just like, wow. It just, it just transports you right back to how beautiful music is and, and just how magical and how powerful it is. So, no, I, I, I don't think you really ever outgrow it. But, I mean, I still listen to those records and I still get just inspired today as I did when I was 15 years old. Are there any new guitar players that you're really digging? Well, I mean, the guys that I'm friends with, I mean, you know, Jared James Nichols, Jared's awesome. I mean, Richie Faulkner, Richie's amazing as well. Uh, Tyler Bryant, you know, we had those guys out on the road. And then uh, between Tyler and Jared, and they're younger cats and, and Tyler's wife, you know, uh, she's an amazing musician as well. So, and her sister. So, but it's just, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, you know, and obviously, I mean, he's not new, but I mean, like Tosin, Abasi and everything like that, you know, we're all buddies with and everything like that. But Tosin's like ridiculously silly. And then you have, there's so many, I mean, it's really inspiring because it's just like when you go on Instagram or whatever and you just see all these younger guys that are, have, and it's not, it's not that they have a grasp on technique. They're, they're great players. You know what I mean? They're, they're speaking. So, and that, that's inspiring for younger kids. I think, you know, just guitar in general. It's, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, there's a lot of upcoming YouTube guitar players. I feel like that's almost a new genre, like YouTube guitar players. Yeah, and I mean, it, that's that's great because I, I think it it gives you exposure, which is what you need, you know, whether, whether Eddie Van Halen would have had Instagram back in the day, you know, it would have been great seeing him. He's playing Eruption and Spanish Fly and all this stuff. And so you could find out about him. You could be in England and find out about this kid crushing it in 
California. And then, you know, and then Ed's out playing at Cazari's and playing at all these clubs and building a fan base. So, you know, before they even have a record deal, you know what I mean? Which is basically what Van Halen did do, you know what I mean? So it's a great platform because back in the day, if you didn't have a record deal by the time you were 30, the dream is over, man. You know, like you got to sell all your gear and get a normal crappy job that you can't stand and give up. Today, you can build your band like a mom and pop shop and be your own boss and dictate your life, which I, I, I think is awesome. It's, it's the best. You know what I mean? Because this way you're not at the mercy of somebody else. You know, you don't have to worry about getting a label or getting a band. I mean, if you can, great. But I mean, it's just like you should be your own boss. So you got some uh, you got some new pedals coming out. Uh, are these kind of an update on some of the pedals that you had already with Dunlap, or have they been updated? Anymore? Yeah, the, I mean, totally. With Jimmy, I mean, I've used those pedals forever, and I mean, they're just great. I, it just they work. You know, what I mean, like with my distortion pedal, it doesn't change the tone of your amp. I mean, what it'll do is just like you have a great sound in amp. It'll just give you more of what you already have. <clears throat> Back when I was using my Marshall JC Main Hundreds, and now I'm using my Wild Audio, you know, my Master One Hundreds. It's just you have a great sound and amp. You just want more sustain, you know, for the solos, whatever, you know, for rhythms or whatever. But I mean, uh, and if you don't want it, you want it clean. You just turn the pedal off. Uh, as far as the distortion pedal goes, and then the chorus pedals are just great. You get that, give you that warm, shimmery, chimey beautiful chorus that i love and then uh you know and then obviously the phase is is just awesome as well so and then we're getting ready to launch the uh the rotor vibe again which is a great pedal so you know it gives you the the, the leslie type you know robin trower hendrixy you know leslie effect you know so you got that and then also and obviously my wah which you know it's a great sound of wah just the the, the spectrum of the tone on it so yeah I, and you know me and jim just talked about doing it again and now we're going to be launching the strings again and everything like that so it's all good man yeah all right is your amp going to be uh turned into a production model anytime soon is that going to be available to to the public my thing is because there's so much stuff going on with the you know with plugins and fractals and and you know that kind of thing that so many people don't even want to use lug around heads anymore cabinets you know what i mean so you know business wise you know me sinking all this money into rotary phones you know what i mean are people gonna i mean i still love them but you know what i mean it's just kind of like as far as a business venture that's that's the whole thing and that's trying to figure out make sure that the price is it's affordable you know what i mean it's a once in a lifetime kind of purchase you know what i mean you know, so, I mean, what, you get a stack. You buy two stacks, you're pretty much set for life. You could be doing Madison Square Garden with that thing, and you could be <laughs> crushing people at the local pub. Have you been using uh, plugins or fractals or anything on any of your records? No, I've never, I've never, like, needed it. You know what I mean? So, I, I mean, the, the things that I've heard, I mean, they sound great. You know what I mean? It's just because, yeah, because you're profiling and you're sampling basically out of a out of a real train wreck or a Dumble or a or a Marshall or a Saldano or a Top Hat or you know all these amazing amps I just mentioned. You know what I mean? So or a Fender Twin Reverb or a Basement or whatever. You know what I mean? So I mean because we're all guitar nerds and we love equipment and gear. So. Cause that's what, that's what makes it fun. It's like stamp and coin collecting, you know what I mean? Or toy collecting, you know, vintage Migos or whatever, you know, Spider-Man and stuff like that. But, uh, no, but I've, I've never really needed to use it. Cause I just always, I'm always using two vamps. You know what I mean? I've always used my Marshalls, my 800s or the, the JMPs, the master volumes or, or my wild audio heads, you know? So I haven't had, an interest in wanting to try, but I have friends that use them and they love them, man. And like you said, it's all down to the the preference and player. I mean, I've always tell everybody there's no 
such thing as best. I mean, because that came from Father Steve Vai. And Steve goes, Zach, there is no such thing as best. It's like, what's your best best Led Zeppelin record? We're not talking about album sales. We're like, what's your best? It's what's your favorite. You know what I mean? I love them all. But, you know, what's your favorite Randy Rhodes solo? They're all amazing. You know what I mean? But, like, all right, well, what today, what's your current favorite? You know what I mean? So, you know, it's just like, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I can spin you around. You can pick any one of them. You know what I mean? They're all good. They're all winners. So uh, just what's your favorite and what's your preference for that day? So I I heard something on – there was something on YouTube. Um, it was your audition tape for Ozzy, supposedly. Um, and I, I gave it a listen, and I was really impressed. There's some really cool classical stuff on there. Like, it seems like you really did your homework uh, making that audition tape. How long did that tape take to make and, and how much thought did you put to what you were going to put on there? Well, I mean, I, as far as all the classical stuff, obviously that's because of St. Rhodes, you know what I mean? Obviously Randy playing classical got, you know, so it's just like, oh, well, that's the hardest thing you can do is learn classical guitar. So it's like, oh, I got to learn that classical, you know? So, um, no, but back then, I mean, I, I was playing classical guitar a lot. You know, so, and I mean, all those pieces that are on that thing, I wrote, you know, so, and you know that, and then obviously me playing Mr. Crowley and some other things like that, you know, for, so obviously that, that's the band I'm auditioning for, you know, it's Ozzy. So, but uh, I don't know. I, I think I, my buddy had a Fostex and we recorded it on that. You know, set up a mic and we recorded like, cause I don't know how to record, but, you know, so I had my buddy, uh, record me on that thing and, and that was it and then we had a cassette so I, I sent it to uh my buddy Dave Feld who I still talked with and Mark Weiss and and they ended up getting it to uh to Oz you know gave it to mom to Mrs. O and Sharon you had it and then uh but Ozzy always told me he said the funny story my sister took a picture of Polaroid of me on the front porch at my parents house and Ozzy said he just remembered because when he when he saw me when I auditioned, he goes, have I met, have I seen you before somewhere? And he goes, and as he looked back at it, he goes, I remember it now because your picture was the only one I looked at, you know, of the audition tapes. And I was just like, oh, look at this kid. He must really love Randy Rhodes, which I do. So uh, who doesn't? <laughs> me and everybody else. So, no, I don't know. However long it took me. Yeah, because I probably, I probably played all that stuff in one take and then, that was it. I got a nerdy technique question for all the kids out there. Uh, what's the key to having good vibrato? I don't know. I mean, I think with everybody, the beautiful thing about vibrato, whether you're listening to Angus Young and Paul Kossoff, they have very kind of similar vibratos. And then you listen to John Sykes is very wide. And uh, but like when up on stage between... Ingbe, I mean, his vibrato is flawless and his pitch and everything like that. Ingbe, Tosin, Nuno, and Father Steve, they could do just vibrato. And I, they don't even have to play shredding licks. Just the vibrato alone, you know who everybody is. Between King Edward, you know. St. Rhodes, you know, all the guys. It's it just Jimi Hendrix, Robin Trower, Frank Marino. I, like, all the guys I just mentioned, you, their vibrato is your is your calling part. I don't know. I, I never – I think you can teach somebody the technique of how, you know, how to, how to bend a string, but I think the rest of it is going to fall on you. I can't just say, you know, like learn how to play loose licks or, you know – learn how to play Red House or whatever, you know, because it's not so much that you have to learn how to play blues or rock or anything like that. It's just, I think it's just a matter of practicing, you know, and I, I think look from looking at anyone that's a beginner to as they're playing matures, you, it's just a, a matter of repetition and doing it over and over and over. And obviously emulating your favorite players, whether it's David Gilmore or Angus Young, or Tony, I Tony Iommi, or Jimmy Page, or any of the guys you love, any any of the players that move you. I, I think no matter what, at the end of the day, event regardless, you're going to have your own sound, which is a beautiful thing, you know, because that's what at the end of the day, that's what you want to achieve: is have your own voice. 
So, you know, and there's nothing wrong with emulating all your favorite players. I, I mean, I still do it when I'm learning dime stuff. I got to, you know, learn all dimes licks. So we always like to ask, uh, you know, some advice to the kid who just picked up a guitar, starting their music career. Um, you have a unique perspective in that you worked uh, with one of the best in the biz, uh, Sharon Osborne, one of the best business minds in the business. Um, what did you learn from Sharon as far as business uh, goes, as far as navigating the music business? Well, I mean, I think like like even right now, I mean, with obviously with Sharon, you know, I love when we refer to as mom because she's been like my mother since I've been 19 years old. So, no, I, I my wife Barbara and my girlfriend back at the time. I mean, you know, when we were kids. Sharon, whenever we had any business things we had to do, obviously we'd always reach out mom and ask her her advice on things and everything like that. But it, what it really comes down to when you really think about it, you know, with Jimmy Page, when he had Peter Grant managing him, people could say, well, what does Peter Grant know about managing people? You know, he's a bodyguard and, you know, he's a, he's a driver. You know what I mean? It's just like, look it, whether I'm managing you and your band is getting ready to go up on stage and you're going to play for $100, if I don't get that money, we're not playing. You know, I mean, what, and it's just like, well, what does Zach know about managing anybody? He just played with Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, what is he, you know, he's not a manager. I go, no, I'm not, I'm not a manager, but I was born at night, but I wasn't born at last night. You know what I mean? It's like, if I don't get the money, you got $80 here. He's, the guys, Justin and the guys are going to play for a hundred bucks. We agreed upon that. Where's the, you're miss, you're shy $20. You know, it's just like running any business. I mean, the whole thing is we own the bar and each one of the beers is a hundred dollars, is a dollar. And we sold a hundred beers. How come there's only $80 in the till? Somebody's stealing money. You know what I mean? So I, I think it really is. It's just, it's that basic. And, you know, like people are always going to try and scam you and be shysters or whatever. You know what I mean? Like the... There's a reason why David Lee Roth put, you know, the brown M&Ms on, on the thing. He goes, put that on there. It's like, why? You don't like the brown M&Ms? He's like, no, I love all M&Ms. But just put that on there because now I'll know if they read it or not. And they'll do like shyster things like, I mean, this happens to every band, to all of us. Like, you know, if you put down the deli tray, like they won't put it on there. So when the deli tray costs $20, it's like, Justin, don't, don't get the deli tray. We'll pocket the $20. If they ask for it, we'll just say we forgot, and then we'll get it. And, I mean, you were just skimming money off the top all the time. We're taking $20 from this band, the next band, every band that comes into our club. You know, if they ask for oh, we're sorry, we forgot. We're like, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you forgot, all right. Go get the deli tray or give me the $20. You can't blame them. You know, it's the hustle, man. So that's business. And if we allow them to, that's why... You could say whatever, anybody could say whatever they want about Gene Simmons and, and Paul Stanley, you know, Uncle Gene and this and that, oh, Gene Simmons with the money. He's like, no, I refuse to be, if I get ripped off, it's nobody's fault but my own because I'm an idiot and I allowed it to happen. It falls on you, you know what I mean? And not only that, though, you should want to know what's going on. You know, aside of practicing and playing and writing and, and being a musician, I get it. You're like, I, I don't want to be bothered with the business. It's just like, yeah, but it is your business, and you should be on it. No matter how careful you are, you're still going to get scammed. There'll still be business deals, and that's all part of learning. Yeah. Learn the business, for sure. Well, I appreciate you dealing with all the nonsense and bullshit and shystery that you've had to deal with over the years to bring us such great music. Yeah, without a doubt. You care about your music. You care about the production on the records and the, and the artwork and everything like that, then you should be, be up on the whole thing, man. You know, just like if you owned a coffee shop, you owned a mom and pop shop. You now we want to make sure the kitchen's clean, the food's fresh. So nobody's getting sick. The coffee's hot. You know I mean? Or we, or we got the cold brew or whatever, but everything's on the up and up. Just run it like a business. I mean, it's, it's your band and it is a business. You know what I mean? Cause that's what you want to do for the rest of your life. You want to play music and you know, and, you know, so on your on your journey to Madison Square Garden or, you know, Dodger Stadium, wherever it is, it's just like, 
when you're starting out, the the joys in the journey, right? and you should, you know, enjoy it. All right, man. Thank you so much. All right, Father Justin. It was great talking to you, and you take care of yourself, my brother.